Hey guys, this is the second video in the series about the infrared repeater uh, project. Um, basically, I used uh, an ATtiny to uh, repeat some infrared codes that were from my projector's remote over to my Sony Media uh, Center, which takes Sony commands. Um, I did this on an ATtiny uh, using the Tiny IR remote. Uh, it's basically uh, just as a port of the IR Remote Library, IR, Mar IR Remote Arduino Library that you can find on GitHub. Um, and then I have a link to where I got the actual, uh, this copy of that library. And it's just the file, so you do have to like put them in a folder and then put them in the libraries folder for Arduino. Um, but yeah, this is working pretty well with ATtiny. Tiny. Um, caveat on that. With uh, the original library, um, it does say it has ATtiny85 support, but um, I couldn't get it to work, uh, and I think other people couldn't as well. Um, and that says that it's going to show up on pin 1, or port B pin 1, uh, but this library, uh, the IR LED, has to be connected to port B pin 4. Um, so basically, I'll jump past these functions for now. In the setup, I just enable uh, serial and then the IR uh, input, which lets me receive. Um, in, the, in the loop here, basically what I do is I check to see if I've gotten anything. So I try to decode, um, and then this returns zero if it didn't get anything. So then this would just return false if I couldn't, if I didn't decode anything. Um, so inside of this if statement, I have decoded something in value. So I print that out to the serial port just for debugging. And then I have a switch statement uh, so that I can see which code I got. And these codes here are uh, NEC style codes. Um, so here you can see the, the block for um, power and it's a little bit longer. Um, but I have two codes here because I wanted to allow myself to be able to turn on or off the media center uh, without turning on or off the projector. So I also this this one this code here is for the menu button. So it just gave me a second input, um, and that's mostly for debugging as well because I just didn't want to be powering on and off my projector a ton of times. It's not great for the bulb. So um, because the projector uh, you can turn it on with one click of the power, but you have to turn it off by double clicking. I have to track whether I think things are on or not. Um, and that obviously can get out of sync, but basically I just, I always start by saying that the device is off, and the device in this case is the, uh, the Sony um, uh, Media Center. So here I'm checking to see if it's on. So if it is on, I have to do the double click thing. So if it is on, I check what now is using the Billy's command and then I have a last power here which is just the time of the last time you put the power button uh, and so I set that to zero um, when it doesn't have a value basically uh, when I haven't set it to a real time so basically check to see if there was a last click um, and then if the last click uh, was less than a second ago, then we're going to turn on. And this is just prints that we're going to turn on. We actually send the power command, and I'll show you how that works in a second. And then, um, or sorry, we're going to turn off. So then here, I've set on to false, and then the last power is zero, meaning that there was no last power click. Then otherwise, so if it's if, if there was no last power click, or um, if the last power click was outside of our timeout, then we just set last power to now, um, and that actually works pretty well. I can show you that in action. Um, and then else, it's actually already on. So we, sorry, it's already off. So we just send the serial print line power. Uh, to tell the serial that we're turning on, and we send the power command to turn the device on, 
and we toggle our Boolean on to be true. That's by far the most complicated case. The rest of these are really simple. Here I have a code for volume up, and this is, and I just do basically send it on the serial and then print it. Of course, I don't have to do the serial, but it's just helpful for debugging. Um, same with volume down, just a different code. Um, and I should say the way I found these codes, uh, I didn't have to know there were any C or anything like that. Uh, all I did is I basically I just watched the value that got printed out here, um, and I clicked a bunch of buttons on the remote, and then I just added them to the case statement. That's really all I did. Um, and then here, at the end of our switch statement, so after we're done possibly sending values, um, I have to re-enable the receiver. Now, ideally, what you would do is you just do irc.resume, which is what you're supposed to do after um, pulling a value out. But uh, I found that if I send a value, um, it, it kills the receive logic unless you run the restart the receiver, which is really unfortunate because, because the send takes you know a certain amount of time. It's like it, it, there are delays involved. I think it's like 40 milliseconds of delay plus whatever the actual time to send the code. So it's a non-trivial amount of time and I'm not listening for codes during that whole time, which is part of the reason why when I just hold down the volume button, it does actually repeat the codes on my remote, but I'm not picking them up all the time because it gets out of sync um, and I'm just not listening uh, during the time that some of the codes are sent. And I haven't figured out how to fix this yet. It's possible that if I change the receive pin to be um, further away from the send pin, because right now they're adjacent, uh, which I think means that they're on the same timer in this case. So it's possible that I'm breaking something like that. And if I change the pins, maybe it'll work, but I haven't tested that yet. And then here I have a delay. This is after all of our logic about the decode and everything. Um, I just have delay for 80 milliseconds, which is uh, time during which the receive logic can try to receive another code. So you can set this lower or higher. I don't know that it really matters, um, you know, exactly what it is. This is the minimum refresh rate, I guess. So like anything pretty low is probably good. But if you put it up higher, then I don't know. That might have better power use. I'm not sure. So that's basically what this main loop does. But now let me show you the send uh, function. So what I have here, I have this enum of codes. So this gives me that power that you saw, the volume up, the volume down. And then I tried to use standby, it ended up not working. I thought maybe that would be a way to force it to turn off, uh, you know, instead of turning on so that I could always get back in sync, but that didn't work. Um, so I have these codes here. And then these codes, um, uh, they just give me the index of the actual Sony code in the array. And that's because the enum always counts up. So power is zero, points to that, and the volume up is there, points to that, and so on. And then this total codes it just tells me like that's one more than the highest index. So it just is you know, that's going to tell me the number of things in this array. I don't end up using it, but it's just a good convention with enums like that. Um, so then the send code, what it does is it takes one of these enums here, um, and which gets turned into an int. Uh, and then basically I send, I R send, specifically I send with the Sony protocol, the stereo codes index at code, which means that I pull if you say power, then code is zero. So I say stereo codes of zero, which is this one right here, because that's stereo codes. So that lets me send that particular code. Um, and this right here is the number of bits. Um, and all of these Sony codes are 12-bit codes. 
Um, so I send that, and um, the way that Sony codes work, you're supposed to send it uh, three times, I believe. Although I found that if I sent it three times, uh, especially with the power command, it would actually like power off and then power back on, which I didn't think was right. So well, and it wasn't very useful. So I changed that to two, and that seems to have worked. But that's why it's a variable. Um, and then there's a delay between repeated times. Um, in the examples for the IR remote, it was 40 milliseconds. Uh, but because I'm unable to listen to any incoming codes while I'm sending, I really wanted to minimize that time. So I set it down to uh, 20 milliseconds. And it seems to be working. Um, if I do have stability issues with that, I'll explain that. So uh, that's the, uh, the send logic, and that's pretty much it.